In 1996, the American semiconductor giant, known as Intel, announced that one of its largest expansion ventures into the Philippines was complete. This move paved the way for journals to newspapers such as Bloomberg to cite that the once known as Asian's sick man is now becoming a magnet for high-tech and electronics companies and investments. The state-of-the-art factory was alluringly initiated due to its 350 million US dollar price tag which was reported to be one of the only three in the entire world where Pentium chips get assembled and tested. Pentium chips were, after all, one of the biggest products of Intel during that time. However, this $350 million facility was not even the only alluring venture of Intel and was not the only reason why foreign and local institutions alike have raised eyebrows. It was because this newly minted Intel factory was just the start. Outside of the capital city, where the $350 million facility lies, a new and upcoming $550 million assembler for high-end chips is in the making, one that would sit upon an industrial park. Such big foreign investments were definitely exciting back in the 1990s. After all, the Philippines suffered greatly from political instability and economic issues. The transformation towards becoming a more foreign-friendly place, especially for electronics, was cited by some to be the next wave of economic growth for the Philippines. Throughout the decades it has been in operation, the total amount of investment poured in by Intel to the Philippines was a massive sum of about one $1.5 billion, which operated from 1974 to 2008. The Philippines was also home to the second biggest offshore assembly plant operation center just behind Malaysia. A very important investment because Intel was not just any American company, but it was responsible for many innovations and especially its role in the rise of Silicon Valley. Yet through many facilities, many years of operations and arguably success, there would come a day when Intel would find its exit. By 2008, the American giant announced that it was prepared to close its Philippine plants, which hampered the economy of the country and also the livelihoods of its thousands or so employees. Once a giant economic driver is now long gone, and the failures of Intel Philippines had raised speculation among many experts and locals. Some suggested that its failure was because of political instability, while others have stated that it was because of the recession impacting the world economy during those times and industry experts themselves have also cited Intel's exit as because of high electricity and labor costs as amongst the largest reasons. But are these really the reasons why Intel left the Philippines? Just why did it close down one of its largest overseas investments and arguably an important part of its business? Well, to understand all of these, we must first go back to the very beginning, the roots that Intel had once laid upon the Philippines. The dawn of the electrical and electronic industry of the Philippines came alive due to many companies and government initiatives. Intel's entrance to the country, however, was reported to be amongst the first to take this opportunity. It was back in 1974 a city known as Makati City was becoming the go-to destination for multinational and local companies. It was growing rapidly as a business district for the Philippines, which would prove to be the headquarters for many large Philippine conglomerates. Intel likewise saw this opportunity and set up its own manufacturing plant in the business district. This was in line with Intel's initiative to outsource some of its work overseas. Their reason being was presumably to cut costs and enhance their own value chain. Hence why, in the same decade, they established many plants not just in the Philippines but across Southeast Asia. The Philippines, however, became important because it would dawn upon itself as the second largest offshore assembly plant before the collapse. Now, throughout many years of operations, the manufacturing plant in Makati had then seen subsequent expansions, in line again with Intel's intent to continue its overseas programs. It helped push the exports of the Philippines to grow, in which electronics by 1995 accounted for over 44% of total merchandise exports, which was more than the entire exports made back in 1988. Intel's entrance was not just any other entrance, it was also a motive, a rather 
clear sign that investing in the Philippines would reap massive benefits. It can be argued that their entrance truly sparked much of the initial investments made by American firms, then European and Japanese. As immediate as its economic benefits were seen, Intel's business was also booming. They moved their plant in Makati to General Trias by 1996, and by 2002 closed off the facility in Makati, and moved all of the remaining manufacturing operations back to the General Trias factory, which was all at the time located in an industrial park. An industrial park famous for housing many semiconductor companies from all around the world. At the same time, the General Trias factory was employing roughly around 3,000 people. The business was booming, they said. And despite many worries led by challenges such as the Asian financial crisis, Intel and its overseas plant still kept growing. By 2004, it was reported that Intel Philippines was accounting for over 36% of Cavite's real domestic product, the province where General Trias was located. A year later, however, despite being such a huge economic contributor, things were starting to look shaky. Rumors had been circulating over the country, and industry experts and media outlets were starting to report that Intel was planning to exit the Philippines by 2010. While it was still a quote-unquote rumor, everything became more clear that this was becoming a fact. Evidence of this happened after Intel opened a new $605 million testing and assembly plant in 2006 around Vietnam. This newly minted facility in Vietnam then raised eyebrows once again, not for the good of the Philippine economy, but as Intel had slowly changed its plans from grooming its facility in the country to favoring more of other nations. However, executives of Intel shut that down. They said it was, quote, simply an expansion and would not affect operations of other plants located in countries such as the Philippines. But was it truly just an expansion plan and not rather an exit plan? In the same year, 2006, they announced a $1 billion investment plan in Asia, greenlighting major plants across Malaysia to China. None of them, however, was made for the Philippines. Furthermore, by 2007, Intel even announced a $2.5 billion plant in China, which further made the Philippines wary that Intel is close to exiting the country. If we mix all of these expansion plans along with a potential housing bubble that would dawn upon the world around 2008, Intel Philippines would then be viable for a shutdown. The global financial crisis further hammered down the world economy around 2008, causing major headaches for governments and massive losses for businesses. Intel, on the other hand, was no outlier. It too experienced challenges during the crisis. However, despite the ongoing issues in 2008, Intel Philippines were still employing 1,800 people which still also accounted for a whopping $5.83 billion to the overall export of the Philippines. That was more than 10% of the nation's $49 billion export revenues during the same year. It was even reported that at one time, around earlier years, the company was employing more than 5,000 people and generating over 36,000 jobs indirectly. Further studies even cited that it accounted for 22% of the total exports in Kvite and and was the largest employer in General Trias. General Trias was, after all, a city around the year 2000 with over 107,000 people. Cavite, on the other hand, was a bustling economy and had more than 2 million people around the same year. These economic contributions, however, would soon disappear. By exactly January 21st, 2009, California-based company Intel Corporation had disclosed plans to close two existing assembly testing facilities, one in Malaysia and the other in Cavite, Philippines. Intel Philippines had announced that it was because of the economic downturn felt in the past few years, demand slowed, and continuing the plant was becoming economically unviable. The corporation itself needed to restructure many of its manufacturing plants, and as a result, this restructuring plan ended up closing Intel Philippines, although it was cited especially by many industry experts that it was because of the financial recession, was it really because of it? Maybe it was the major and probably the sole reason for the exit. However, one cannot doubt that if the Philippines was a better destination for investments, they would still continue to be in the country. Many industry experts have cited high electric costs and labor costs much more than their neighboring countries.
But anyway, why do you think Intel exited the country? Was it because of costs or was it due to the financial crisis? Or maybe it was because of political instability. After all, a Bloomberg article in 2004 had even reported that Intel wanted to be in countries with little to no political instability. Either way, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.